531,441, which is, this is 27 squared, 27 to the fourth. And if you agree, we would get a sequence that continues like that on to infinity. And now I'll just kind of show you a little bit how they they are. So 25 times 625 is 15,625. So that's 25 times 625 times 15,625 is 15,625 squared. And we can see this is an important sequence too, because this is how you understand uh, how you get, for instance, uh, numbers from one exponent to the other. I don't know really exactly how to explain that in this moment, but... Okay, so basically we have 2 times 5 times 8, and this is how I was talking about getting into that zeros when you want to get these whole zero numbers, and what happens here is we're going to go 2 times a 5 times an 8. So it's 2 and 8, and then with the 5, we get it to the zeros. So 2 times 5 is 10 times 8 is 80. Uh, okay, so 4, that's 8 and a 0. So 4 times 625 times 512 is 2 squared times 5 to the 4th times 8 to the 3rd. 2 squared times 5 squared times 5 squared times uh, 8 squared times 8. So basically just breaking it down. Breaking it down until you get to the round numbers. So uh, 2 times 5 times 5 times 8 times 8. Well, that's 400 and we got, they're all squared. So except for that 8. So it's 400 squared times 8. And now you see how we're we're basically adding and multi well, multiplying rather large numbers, but it's giving us it's giving us the answer. <laughs> it, it really is. Okay, so 4 times 25 times 64. Here we go again. This is how we get to these zeros. It's 4 times 5, 2 times 5 times 8. 2 times 5 is 10, times 8, 80, that's zero. So 4 times 25 times 64, that'll have to give us the same thing. Uh, 4 times 25 is 100, times 64 is 6400. So 6400 is 64 with two zeros. A little bit analysis of the fives, okay. So 100, uh, well, 25 times 125, well, not really. 5 times 25 is 125, times 5 is 625. 625 squared would give us the number that follows this 78125, which would be x to the 8th. It would be 5 to the 8th. We just see that because... We look at the thing and we see if this is x to the third and this is x to the sixth, then x to the third squared is x to the sixth. So any of these numbers squared is going to equal this kind of number. <laughs> Five to the sixth times seven to the third. Okay, well that that's going to break down into a number that at least we got it down to a five. Uh, a five number. So 175 to the third is a lot easier number than dealing with uh, 5,359,375. But we just do it because we do the algebra. We do it algebraically. Uh, this is seven to the third and this is five to the third. Okay, it's five to the sixth. So it's five to the third times five to the third times seven to the third. In so doing, we were able to get the exponents all to be the same so that we could multiply that number and give us a simple result. And that's what I'm kind of showing you is that this thing is going to teach you how to do all of that. And then whatever math you're doing on whatever level, uh, you know, because this pertains to every level of math, contains this arithmetic because this is where the math came from that you're going to be studying. Any math that you study, it comes directly from here. And it's not made up by man like some of the math that were... Well, it's not made up by man. Uh, no math is made up by man. It's just, once again, discovered by man. It's discovering something that 
already previously exists and it's immortal and eternal. Here we have two to the fourth times two to the uh, times four to the fourth times eight to the fourth, and that we can multiply with the, with each other uh, algebraically, and it's very easy because it's two to the fourth times four to the fourth, eight to the fourth times uh, eight to the fourth is sixty four to the fourth. Very good, but sixty four to the fourth is also eight to the eighth. 16 to the 6th, 4 to the 12th, 2 to the 24th. And if we were looking for uh, ways to get any of those numbers to match up, then we would have found it just using that very method. So what we can do is we can break up these numbers into their constituents. But we'll see that as the universal law of numbers showed us in the very beginning, what did it show us? It showed us that it goes this way, and it's in... Uh, an infinite sequence to infinity. It told us that it goes this way in an infinite sequence to infinity. It also told us that it goes this way to infinity and it goes this way to infinity. And now we remember that because now we can do 36 times 1296. Well, I know the answer to that. It's 46656 because 2 plus 4 is 6. And it's as easy as that. But 46, 656 is also a very important number. It's one of the familiar numbers you'll become familiar with in this world of numbers. 25 times 625 is 15,625. So 15,625 squared is the answer to that. But we can get it in 25s, 125s, and 625s if we so chose, if we needed to. 64 times 4096 times 262, 144, we can do that because it's going in the direction that the universe tells us it can. And it goes to 64 to the 6th. And here we have what we're allowed to do. 981, 729, that's 3 to the 3 squared to the 4th and 6. Uh, 4, 6, well, 6, 4, and 2. Easy, 12. 3 to the 12th, but 3 to the 12th is 9 to the 6th. And we know that. And here we just show, uh, I think I showed this one sort of before. 9 times 81 gives that. 81 times 65, 61 gives that. That continues. So all we want to uh, point out now is the importance of this number 64. So we saw that 64 occurs in the original sequence uh, of the 369 code. And we also see that if we are moving further in this direction, this is the, what the 369 code does, and it gives us the answers to the other. Uh, it gives us, <laughs> if we were doing it, these multiplying these numbers up here against each other, we would have had to be getting the numbers that occur further on to the right, and that's what this is. Because 10 squared, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 squared, it still gives us the 149779419 because it's a 369 code. And uh, you can keep on going forever, and I think you know that. But anyway, uh, I tried to point out this thing about the number 64. So the number 64 is a very, very, very important number on that level, you know, above one, but not some crazy numbers that are out of this world or whatever. But uh, if we understand the way this number 64 works, we, we understand that we can sort of start over the whole system again using 64 literally as the one. If you were to choose to do that for whatever reason, you were studying populations or whatever of things that are in the realm of that kind of number, we see that as 2 goes up, doubling 2, it's going to be 64 on and on and on. 64 to the 4th, 64 to the 8th, 16, double it. 64 to the 32, double it. 64 to the 64, double it. 64 to the 128. And that that carries on and carries on. I just uh, show you that and I point that out to you. Okay, so here's the universal law of numbers matrix and we see that the 64 is here and the 64 is here and the 64 is here the 4096 is here and here 
and uh, we know that uh, 64 times 64 is 4096 because that's 64 squared. And 64 to the third is 262, 144. 64 squared is 4096. We see that back there again. And what we're seeing is we're seeing a diagram that looks something like this. Okay, that's the diagram, and it's showing us how the 64 plays itself out. It goes from 64 to the 1, to the 2, to the 3, to the 4, to the 5, to the 6th, to the 7th, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, etc. So this 64, if we were to calculate out the numbers uh, going in the direction of infinity, uh, getting larger, we're coming across this, uh, this recurring 64. So what I'm trying to point out here is we can even do the universal law of numbers with starting with 64 because that's 164, two of them, three of them, four of them, nine of them, and that keeps on going on forever in the same fashion. If we were to do that, it would look like this. Can't even fit those numbers inside those boxes. But what you will see is uh, how you can go further and further and further and further. And your textbook is the universal law of numbers. And you can have it the Roman version. You can have the Stone Man version. Or you can just have our... Universal law of numbers. <laughs> I can't even find one when I would need, need one, oh, but I'm sure I will. Okay, so this is the textbook. Uh, it's the universal law of numbers textbook. I consider it the universal law of numbers game, and if you become proficient at understanding this game, which is uh, pure mathematics, then obviously you will become uh, proficient and all mathematics will be much easier to, to learn and grasp and comprehend and understand only because you understand what it's coming from, where it's coming from, and I encourage people to study the codes uh, because I've done many of those videos and just really touched the surface, but underlying this conventional mathematics, algebra and the like that we study in school is this universal law of numbers code. My name is Paul Whittakind. Uh I wish all good people uh, peace and happiness, and I'm signing out.